Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Sacred Mountains in the Upper Paleolithic at this year's International Union of Prehistoric and Protohistoric Sciences World Congress. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my research explores a deep route to mankind's creative capacity by looking at how we came to view our cosmos through the study of Upper Paleolithic cave art. In this presentation, we will journey back in time to some of the earliest European rock art to explore connections with sacred mountains on both the European and African continents. The sacred or cosmic mountain where humanity is believed to have interacted with the divine is a worldwide phenomenon. We can travel around the globe and find such beliefs just about everywhere mountains exist. There are dozens of documented examples that include Mount Everest, which is believed to be the abode of a Tibetan Buddhist goddess. And Mount Uru in Australia that is considered to be a sacred place for ancient spirits by regional Aboriginal peoples. This sacred mountain has long been a place of connection to the divine. In the Abrahamic tradition, Moses was given the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, which is believed to be Jebel Musa in Egypt. In Greek mythology, the Titan Atlas held up the sky on a mountain of his namesake where he was turned to stone by the hero Perseus and tricked by the mighty Hercules. Today, that mountain in the high Atlas Mountains of Morocco, which is also the tallest mountain in West North Africa, is called Jebel Tobacal. The Phoenician author Sanchinatho, who lived about 1200 BCE, described Atlas as the brother of time, who had traveled to the western part of Africa, where he settled on a high mountain that supported the heavens, so as to devote himself to the study of astronomy. Mount Elbrus is the highest and most prominent Caucasus mountain peak in Russia and Europe. In Greek mythology, this is where the Titan Prometheus was tragically chained for his disobedience. The liver of this traitor to the gods was consumed daily by a giant vulture until the mighty Hercules set him free. One can see how the geological features on Mount Elbrus can easily become paradoia to give the impression of a vulture and a geographic location for the myth. We can travel around the world and find sacred mountains derived from their loftiness or with pareidolia projected into myths. Let us now travel deeper in time to examine sacred mountain relationships through the pareidolia that animates them. Pictured here is an engraving in Gorham's Cave at Gibraltar, dating to approximately 36,000 years ago, that I call Gorham's Etching. You may have previously seen this image referred to by others as Abstract Art of Neanderthals. Gorham's cave was discovered in modern times around the turn of the last century. This engraving that sits near to the cave's entrance was accidentally refound by archaeologists in 2012. People had walked past it for over a hundred years. The crossing lines of Gorham's etching, the so-called hashtag, closely resemble the northwestern view of Mohassan, which is the highest mountain on the Iberian Peninsula. The current walk between Gorham's Cave and Mohassan is about a week. Gorham's etching appears to have been scaled with two hands that we can use to gauge its size. One can see the metacarpals on the downward hand. On the face of Mohassan has what appears to be the head of a horse, which the Gorham's etching artists recognize. Note that there are no heads of horses on Mohassan. This is pareidolia. Some early art was founded in the human mind as pareidolia and then transferred to physical mediums to what we now consider art. The artist found another horse in the lines in Mahasan that had transferred to Gorham's etching. As we will continue to see, Gorham's etching is an important archaeological find, even though it just isn't abstract art of Neanderthals. There is a running man who is outlined by both horizontal and vertical lines. I will post this presentation on my webpage at beforeorion.com for closer examination. There are many other Gorham's etching characters posted there for examination as well. The man appears to fit into the horse to become a rider, or perhaps he becomes one with the horse in a transcendent shamanic light experience. The Gorham hero takes on an unusual front foot and is accompanied by a pair of overlapping dogs. The star shape on the dog in the foreground is in the correct location of the bright star Cirrus in the constellation Canis Major relative to the running man that is Orion in that time and place. The constellations and the Gorham hero with his dogs are also founded in Paradoia. We continue our journey to Cantabria in the north of Spain to explore the El Castillo cave 
and the mountain of the same name. Where on the 10 meter across panel called the gallery of discs, there are more than 80 red discs that are on average about the size of the palm of your hand. One disc among them has been dated to at least 34,000 years old. The El Castillo cave was first explored during modern times in 1903. On this panel, we find an archetypal teacher and apprentice. Note the wide interested eyes of the apprentice and how the teacher speaks into his ear. Perhaps you can tell us more about the mind of the upper Paleolithic artist in Sacred Mountains. I should note that the path leading to the identification of these characters and the ones that follow on the Gower of Discs closely parallels that of the rediscovery of Gorm's etching. There's an elephant drinking water from a pool and another with a raised trunk, or so it seems. Turn your head sideways and you will see that they are the same elephant the artist formed from the same ear and trunk. We encounter a Barbary ape, which is indigenous to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. There's a lioness who appears to be licking a maned lion. And a mother giraffe and her juvenile, which definitively designates this section of the panel as Africa. There's a toothy crocodile that is roughly 15 meters in length and a mother bear who watches her cubs climb a tree to safety. We can revisit Jebel Tabakal in the high Atlas Mountains of Morocco with this new information, where on the southwest face, we find Paradoia origins of the characters on the gallery of discs. At the top of the panel in mountains are the crocodile. To the viewer's left is a block shape that the artist found to be diagonally in the rocks as the lioness and vertically as the Barbary ape. In the center is the lion and across the middle is the elephant. One of the current Jebel Tobacal summit climbing routes is across the elephant's trunk and up over the head. The gallery of disc artists even pictured this odd canid looking geological formation from Jebel Tobacal. Note that this character does not exist in the animal kingdom. This is Paradoia on the mountain and fantastical art on the gallery of discs. The connection for the upper Paleolithic artists was physically achievable as it is today. The walk and swim from the El Castillo Cave in Spain to Jebel Tobacal in West North Africa is approximately 30 days. We can find these characters as Paradoia in the night sky as well in that time and place. The crocodile is the constellation Draco the dragon. The bears are Ursa Major and the lion is Leo. The eyes of the Barbary ape are the stars Castor and Pollux in the constellation Gemini. The head, trunk, and tusks of the elephant are Taurus and Aruga. The ancient Greeks substituted a horn bull for a tusked elephant. There are many archaeoastronomy presentations on my webpage, beforeorion.com, where I explore upper Pelithic origins of these and other constellations left to us in the Greek record. Which returns us to the Phoenician author Sanchenatho, who wrote of Atlas as the brother of time, who devoted himself to the study of astronomy on the cosmic mountain that we today call Jebel Tobacal and also in Greek mythology, where the Titan Atlas was turned to stone by the hero Perseus and tricked by the mighty Hercules to forever hold up the sky on the sacred peak of his namesake in a time and place when the earth and sky were one. In summary, we have found that early recordings of these sacred high mountain observances can be found in the upper Pelican Caves of El Castillo in Cantabria, Spain, and in Gorm's Cave in Gibraltar, Panels in these caves store human fabricated images that closely resemble geological features on two high mountains in the Greater Iberian, or perhaps we should say, Western North African region. This supports the hypothesis that peoples in ancient times and worldwide today have a common connection to early Upper Paleolithic traditions of regarding high mountains as being sacred, such as we have found on this journey across time and space into the Upper Paleolithic mind that is still our own. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak at this year's Congress. More in my work can be found at these sites. I am always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences. A pre-recording of this presentation will be posted to my webpage.